everybody thank you for joining our webinar today we're going to be talking about discovering the three successful three step system i'm messing it up three step <laughs> system approach used by the world's leading nonprofits. And I'm so glad I'm not the one speaking today because I'm tongue tied. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. I'm so glad you are here. I'm just gonna share with you a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. You know that this is being recorded and we're gonna email it to you within 48 hours. Um, for those of you who would like to put a question in the Q&A, feel free, but you can also put it in the chat room and we'll be getting to your questions as soon as possible. If you would like the closed caption, I'm going to turn that on in just a moment. But I'm excited that our partners from TAP Network is here and really they're going to just run the show and give you a lot of information. So I hope you write down notes. And Joe, I'm going to turn it over to you. Welcome, Joe and Peggy. Thank you so much for being here. Great. Thank you. Hi. Welcome, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, Peggy and I are super excited to be here. Um, my name is Joe Giovanni. I'm the co-founder of TAP Network. We're TechSoup's exclusive partner for digital marketing and technology. So anytime you need those types of services, we work with TechSoup and their nonprofits. We serve around two to 300 nonprofits a year. And we work a lot with Peggy on the strategy side, on the collective impact uh, side of the fence. I'll let her introduce herself as well, but we've been also working together for almost 10 years uh, to support nonprofits. Hi, I'm Peggy Geisler. I am the CEO and strategic lead consultant for PMG Consulting Planning Management and Growth Acceleration. Um, really excited to be here, work with nonprofits on ecosystem, collective impact models, uh, strategic planning, and all sorts of needs, including leadership coaching. So Really delighted to be here with Joe today to help you accelerate what you'll be doing to make social impact happen in your community. Great. Thanks, Peggy. Yeah, so, so today uh, we're going to talk about the three pillars. We, we look at the three pillars, the stakeholders, the community, and funders. Um, and, you know, in, in terms of digital transformation and, and accelerating your impact and funding, these are, the, these are the three key pillars. And what it really comes down to for all three is the systems that you're using from a strategic standpoint, the models, the theories, the processes, um, that's where, where Peggy comes in and, and then the technology to really get it done. Um, so we'll go through these three pillars and we'll go through the models and we'll also look at the different technologies. Anyone from a one person nonprofit to an enterprise level nonprofit, um, you know, working with over two to 300 nonprofits a year, we've really gotten a great feel for what works and, and the quickest way to, uh, to accelerate your digital transformation and, and success in the digital age. So um, I get to talk a little bit about what is your model of change? Uh, when your organization is gonna address something in the community, you fit in one of these spheres or you may influence all of them. It's important to understand that it's sometimes really difficult when you think about society and the policy, what I call big P with laws, community, how your community is linked together and the little P um, as well as um, interpersonal, meaning across different organizations within their family units. Um, there's demographic, regional areas, and then the individual, what influences him, her, um, whoever in regards to making decisions. And, to really create social impact, sometimes you need to be able to move all of these spheres of influence forward or just operate in two or three of them. And that can become very difficult if you don't have a framing tool for that or you don't have technology to help provide a framing tool for that. Exactly, Peggy. And, and you know, to, to build on that, you know, you need a framing tool and we'll get into the framing tools, but you also need a, a marketing tool. We did a, a benchmark uh, survey last year with TechSoup, the nonprofit digital marketing uh, benchmark report. 50%, over 50% of nonprofits do not have a CRM, uh, customer relationship management platform, constituent relationship management platform to really engage their donors, their volunteers, their stakeholders. That, that piece is missing. And 41% said they have no segmentation capability at all. So that's just throwing spaghetti against the wall. And whether you're trying to reach your, your dog sitter or your, your funders, you're gonna to need to segment. So we really saw a huge gap in, um, in this one technology piece. So we'll be going through um, some of that as well today and looking at the different ways you, could, you can kind of 
decrease that gap in, in your technology. If you look at the, the current state of nonprofit communications, it goes beyond just the CRM. A lot of nonprofits still using email for all of their communications, whether it's stakeholders, constituents, uh, funders, even internally with staff. And it's, it's, it's super inefficient. It's probably one of the most inefficient tools you can, you can use. So we'll look at other tools to complement that. Um, you know, trying to manage a collective impact uh, process or a board meeting using whiteboards and sticky notes, that just doesn't work anymore in, in the digital age. And with Zoom, it, it's, it's out of control. People are turning into cats. That's not good. Um, it's just, things are complicated and, and getting all these different technologies to work together, that, that's our goal and we'll go through um, some of that today. Yeah, we wanna make it simple. It's not as complicated as it looks. This is um, SpaceX command control. I think the only person who's managing it, I think they're using HubSpot, they're on the left-hand side. Um, so we wanna make this simple for everyone as well. And we'll, and we'll look at the different technology and tools whether you're talking to your stakeholders, community, or your funders, we wanna make it accessible, affordable, and, and easy for you and, uh, and your team. So we'll, we'll start out with stakeholders. I'll have Peggy go into um, the collective impact approach to communicating with your stakeholders. And then we'll look at some really uh, nice pieces of technology to, to pull all that together. Absolutely. So Many of you may have heard of the five conditions or for collective impact model, and there is always a physical framework that helps you organize your stakeholders and your communities together to create social impact. Collective impact out of Stanford Innovations is one of them. Let's unpack that for a few minutes and talk about each of those components, and it'll become more relevant as Joe talks about the tools that can help you create collective impact digitally as well as um, in, in the physical sense. So Joe, next slide. Sure. So what is collective impact? Here's collective impact 101. It's the main organizations or backbone organizations. It doesn't have to just be one who are what we call your anchor groups. They're the ones who actually lead the charge, need to communicate more robustly, but also need to deliver messaging out to a larger stakeholder group. They're the ones who should be deciding to some extent and can also be organizationally, if you're a statewide organization, you can also use collective impact, by the way. But it's the main stakeholders who are going to decide the messaging that goes out, when, how. And there's internal messaging with your organizations and then external front facing with your funders and your other stakeholders or partners in the community. And you then are creating a common agenda. What is it you're trying to change? Saw some uh, people on here around reentry. There's probably the arts I saw, there could be food access, there's a number of social impact or could be the social determinants of health, all of them, right? But this allows you to organize your community in a way that you can manage it. Shared me measurement, how do you know what you're doing as the community is making an impact? How do you align and benchmark? I'm just gonna give you some tools that help you do that today um, so that you know, you know whether what you're doing is making a difference. Mutually reinforcing activities. How do you get everyone, um, herding cats is what I call it. How do you get everybody on the same page if you're all working towards literacy, if you're all working towards the environment? How do you align those strategies, those goals, those, uh, uh, those processes together that um, actually you can reduce redundancy, increase your um, amounts of the funding that you have, and also bring people around the table in a way to fill gaps. And then continuous communication. That's where I think a lot of the digital comes in because you have to communicate with each other to get all of this done. And then you have to front face with the community so they know what's being done and how they can be a part of it. And the tools you're about to hear will help you do collective impact in a digital way. Great, thanks, Peggy, exactly. And I, I just saw David mention, you know, the returning to in-person arts engagements and advocacy, and that's hopefully what we all can do. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really about the experience and how do you complement that, you know, through digital so more people can meet up in person and then continue those conversations digitally or, you know, in any other channel that they're used to communicating in. Um, so with Collective Impact, you saw how you know, it, not that it's complicated, but but it is. And, and these are some huge major 
challenges and problems that people are trying to solve, nonprofits are trying to solve. And without having a system in place to do it and communicate, it makes it uh, super difficult. So what we're seeing now with collective impact is a lot of government organizations, cities, states, counties, municipalities, and nonprofits are using some of the most um, affordable, efficient emerging technologies to communicate. So we'll go over uh, a couple of those. And then the tools to actually measure you know, success in, uh, along those lines as well. So we call it Collective Impact 2.0, but it's really taking the theory, taking it out of the lab, taking it off the whiteboard and, and using the best tools to accelerate it. One of the tools that we use with the most of our nonprofits is Slack. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. If, if you're using it now, just give a shout out in, in the chat, but just to get an idea of, of who's using Slack, but it's a wonderful tool. The research has been around on, you know, the, the return on investment from people, organizations that have shifted from, you know, using email to communicate to Slack. Um, if you're getting, uh, you know, something, a product to market or event to market, or you're driving volunteers, um, you know, it's the, the, the proof is out there that it's going to accelerate your communications. And it's, it's a wonderful tool. Um, I'll go back here real quick, but with Slack, you can, you can set up communications amongst your team members in the, on an individual level. You could communicate with, with two or three folks and have a channel for that. You can have channels for your different funders, your different donor groups. Um, it could be community partners. But with Slack, you can have all these communications. They're all segmented. They're all organized. You can uh, you can hop on a quick. Uh, and I think Joe, there was a right. comment in the chat box. It's hard to transition over to it. There's always a, a time. It's when you adopt it and you really start utilizing it becomes easier. And I think for for nonprofits, you heard board comments earlier. Sometimes it's the change that's most difficult. But once people get used to it, they wonder why did I not do it before now. Yeah, it's, you know, anytime, anytime you switch from using email or, you know, in, another program for years, it's, it's difficult to switch, but we've, we've seen it with many of our organizations. We just switched over um, a, uh, a nonprofit that, that manages pretty much all the mental health workers in the state of Delaware. And you have mental health workers, you have community health workers, staff, um, all, all these folks, they're using Slack. They, they said they got a 6x ROI in terms of um, time saved from, from using email. So yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. And there's a special, yes, there's a special nonprofit tier. And you can get that through TechSoup at a, at a discount. Um, we, can, we can discuss, I can reach out to you later, Matsu, on... Um, I'm just reading the Slack here for donor groups. Donor groups, it's it's a little it's a little more difficult. We go into some other programs to 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 target donor groups, unless they're actual groups who are supporting you in terms of collaborating to to drive a fundraiser. You might not want to reach out to them directly to donate, um, but we'll get we'll get back into that a little bit more as well. Okay. The, uh, the other tool that we recommend, just we have, you know, from sake of time here, I'll come back and address some of these questions, uh, is Airtable. Airtable is, is similar to, uh, to TechSoup, to, to uh, Excel, but it's a, it's a relational database. So it's a collaborative work management software program. And it's a way to really manage your, your campaigns. You can manage your content, you can manage your, you know, you can coordinate your campaigns. And it's a it's a relational database. So if you're if you have all different, um, let's say you're, you're you're running a campaign for a fundraiser that's coming up in a few months, you would have all your social media posts, the content, the blogs, everything else as well uh, in this one database. And it's relational. You can assign it to different groups. Um, people can review. It's it's just a really nice collaborative work management uh, program that goes beyond Excel. And can really help save time. So we'll we'll have some links on Airtable for you as well. One example: the Delaware Prosperity Partnership. They're a huge nonprofit. They drive economic development for the state. So they work with hundreds of businesses. It's almost as if they're a, a news media channel on one end, and they're also driving philanthropy on the other. 
So to manage that amount of content, publishing, interviews, case studies, everything like that with multiple audiences, they use Airtable on the back end to schedule out and map out all their content so they can, they can manage their strategy. That's that. And then the last piece is uh, ClickUp. They were, they were big advertisers actually on the Super Bowl. Again, these are, these are million, billion dollar companies that um, have, have kind of wor worked their way through the business world and now nonprofits are, are, are catching up. Um, ClickUp is great for project management. This is for larger enterprise nonprofits, uh, some smaller nonprofits too, but it's really for managing projects. If, if you have a big gala coming up and you have, you have to assign different tasks and subtasks and look at the time associated with doing these different tasks or setting up dependencies. So once one thing gets done, then you can go on to the next. ClickUp is a great program and platform for that. They have a free program for, uh, for nonprofits. Here's just an example in, internally of, of um, us using Slack here. But we have, like I, like I mentioned, 100 different nonprofits uh, at least a year. Each one has their own marketing campaign or website development. And we're managing all different folks to get these projects done. And likewise, collaborating some in some instances working with the nonprofits to to assign tasks so this is a nice uh tool as well which which you can also um get at a super discount believe free uh for nonprofits as well so that's great for project management um do we have any questions in terms of the the stakeholders just just in summary you know ClickUp is great for project management Airtable wonderful for content management, planning your campaigns, and Slack is really gonna help accelerate communications amongst all your, your stakeholders. But and, and Joe, just really quickly for those who are watching, how well do they function with each other when you need to utilize them in concert with one another for some reason? So when you're thinking about using them for multiple things in your organization, do they work well together? Yeah, they. All, all three work well together. There's, you know, we, we, with a lot of nonprofits, we integrate them together. Um, they also work with HubSpot. Um, so you're not going to be, in, in many cases, you might start out using them in silos, but then you, you can connect some of these as, as well. And does Airtable also have part of that nonprofit discount? Are they part of your, is that? Yeah, Air, Airtable, Airtable. I think it's ten dollars a person for people using Airtable. So, okay. all these are free or 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 relatively inexpensive, around ten dollars uh, per user. Yeah, and and we you specifically picked them for that reason because we knew we'd have some really small nonprofits on here as well as large, and we wanted to remove that barrier because capacity is often an issue with uh, the smaller and mid tier nonprofits. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, and then I'm just looking at the, the there's a million questions I know. Uh, Airtable, I'm pretty sure Airtable has a nonprofit discount. It, it's either, like I said, free or $10. I, I'll go back and, and double check. Some of these discounts are, you know, they, they come on for a little bit and they pull back. Um, in terms of Google Sheets, like I said, Airtable is a relational database. So it's much easier to, um, you know, it's, it has much more tagging opportunity to, you know, tag things by user, by project, by task, by content piece. Um, so it's it's like Google Sheets on steroids, I would say. Right, and there's been a question about how it compares to Asana, but I'm not familiar with Asana, to be honest with you, Joe, I'm not the tech person, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so yeah, so that's stakeholders. Again, we'll send the deck out and we, you know, we're open and you, we could speak to some of our um, tech experts on these platforms as, as well. And we can, we can answer more questions, but these are great questions. And there's a lot of different tools out there. We were trying to find the ones that are most accessible and that uh, work across mo as many platforms as, as possible. The next piece we wanna to cover today is the community. Uh, really looking at full funnel communication. So you're communicating with your stakeholders, whether you're using Slack, Airtable, Asana, you know, all these different platforms, really getting that piece together. But then when it comes to the community, um, looking at a full funnel communications approach to the community so we can actually drive behavior change. 
And you know, looking at the benchmark study that we did, there's a lot of nonprofits that still aren't using a CRM or you know, more modern tools to, to communicate that way. Um, and that, you know, that technology is there now. When you're using Netflix and it makes a recommendation or Amazon and it, it, you know, it's recommending movies, music, books, products, or even your watch, you know, this, this type of AI now is available. You know, businesses have been using it via Salesforce, now HubSpot. HubSpot now has been uh, even more configured towards nonprofits. So it's a more affordable way to, to use that type of AI. Um, that's smart marketing technology, automation, personalization uh, to drive fundraising and, and behavior change. So these tools that, that you're seeing with the billion dollar organizations are to a degree available for, for nonprofits. And that's, that's super exciting. They're affordable and they're accessible. Um, so when we, when we approach our work with a nonprofit, we, you know, a lot of them are still using awareness-based campaigns and, and, and awareness-based campaigns are, are really becoming uh, extinct. You know, that's a, a, a billboard or a banner ad, sending people to brochure-like websites and not having that AI behind it, that CRM behind it to really take it to, to the next level other than seeing, you know, a billboard or a banner ad. And that type of marketing is, is really in terms of nonprofits is, is, is going away, which is great. And, and we'll show you some of the ways that that is happening. So, you know, we basically say no to silos. Instead of doing all these different types of um, marketing to your community and silos, you know, taking an omni-channel approach. That's looking at, you know, print, social media, out of home, website, videos, all these different pieces, and not just communicating through them and, you know, in, in a multi-channel level, but omni-channel, so they're all connected. So we'll know someone saw an ad on social media. We know they went to the website, left the website and went to ESPN and we can target them that way and learning about your users so you can really drive that messaging. You know, whether you're trying to drive fundraising or you know, promote you know, a social determinant of health issue where you, know, you can connect all these pieces and that, and that happens through a CRM. Um, HubSpot and TechSoup have partnered this year to offer, I believe, a, a, seven, a 40 to 70 percent discount on um, on HubSpot, and it's just it's a really great CRM. We've used it in the B2B space, and now it's it's been updated, so it's more uh, it works even it works great with nonprofits. You can segment audiences, and you could do repeat funding uh, donations on it now. So it's, it's a great CRM. And if you guys wanna have a demo or read the blog about you know, a use case, the link is here and we, we can have someone um, you know, hop on the phone with you as well and, and, and run through a demo. Right, and Joe, jo, just really yeah. quickly, I think what's important when you say to know your audience, when we talked at the beginning, your audience has are three things in the nonprofit field. They're the community you're serving. There's the stakeholders you're working with, and then there are the funders that are supporting the work you do. And that information and how it's put out and the way it's put out across those networks, it's kind of tricky. And it doesn't have to be if you're using a system like this. Yeah, it, it, exactly. And you know, it's it took a while, but now they've 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 given a discount to nonprofits. You can get it through TechSoup, um, and there's there's some nice use cases on on how it works. I'm going to run through a few use cases in terms of, um, you know, looking at different models of change back in, into um, Peggy's field of expertise, and then how, how does HubSpot or any CRM really help your nonprofit? Um, so, oh, one more, one more uh, HubSpot slide, just to give you a visual. But on the back end, you, know, you would have a profile to, to what everyone's saying here in chat. You know, know your audience so you would know whether this was a funder or a partner or a community member if, if they opted in to, to, to provide that information you, you'll know everything about them you will know and not everything but um you know the information that they do give you and then you'll know what what content they've read what social media they've clicked on what blogs they've downloaded how much they've donated um what specific you know interests they have um, and all that would be in the CRM. And then you can actually run campaigns 
and, and set up workflows on the right here for someone like that. So if you if you have a funder and you know you could have different A B workflow algorithms set up with the type of information and communications that you're giving them to ultimately get them to donate or to get them to volunteer. All this can be done on, on the back end. So just to give you a, a, a visualization, sometimes it's you know it's talking in theory, but looking behind the scenes a little bit. So we're gonna talk about three different um, models here. Um, full funnel uh, model for, for communicating with the community, the health belief model, and the theoretical um, theory of change model. Um, I know it's it sounds a little complicated, but um, you know, any any time that you're working with um, your audience, you're you're going to need to choose a model that that that's the most appropriate. So for fundraising, we look at the uh, full funnel model. That's top funnel, which is mostly um, awareness. That's awareness is driven by advertising, social media, display ads, outdoor, you know. And if you just did top of the funnel, like most nonprofits have have done in the past, you're never really going to get the um, the impact that you need. So you need to educate audiences and engage them and ultimately grab, you know, gain, gain their commitment. So in terms of lead capture, some level, let's say someone comes from an ad, a social media post, they come to the website, you want, you're gonna have blogs, they're gonna download information, you're gonna capture information about them. HubSpot or another CRM is a great tool to, to capture that information. And then you want to uh, nurture these leads so they ultimately donate. And that's on the back end when you set up those workflows I was referencing or remarketing. They come to the website, you know they're interested in your cause, then they pop off and go to ESPN or CNN or wherever they may go, and those ads follow them. So, and, and, and it's progressive. You're progressively profiling them, you're personalizing the message, and it's automated. It happens in your sleep. So you can, so you can accelerate the, uh, you know, the, the donation efforts that you have and ultimately activation. You know, how do you, how do you then um, delight these audiences, give them the, the capability to start crowdfunding or do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising on, on Facebook? So looking at this in terms of a funnel, coming up with the messaging, the channels, the tools, and then on the back end, using a program such as HubSpot to, to pull this all together, create these workflows, and then put them out there. So this is just an example for fundraising. There, there's other um, examples as well. The next slide is uh, stages of change theory. So like I said, anytime you're running a communications campaign, you really have to think through, well, what, what proven model am I, am I gonna use? Um, if it's volunteering, event registration, membership, a lot of folks, you know, will will put this model into place, and you've seen this before. It's it's a it's a you know pretty solid basic marketing model, from pre contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action or trial, and then sale or maintenance or enrollment. So how do you get that person to to volunteer, to register for an event, to become a member, and then what types of communication channels are you going to use? Advertising, SEO in the pre-contemplation mode, social media webinars. So you're starting to educate them in contemplation. They come to the website, you're engaging them. So again, similar to the full funnel model, looking at it a little differently, but then coming up with the communications to, to do this. We'll use Airtable sometimes as a tool to, to map all this out when we're collaborating and then port it over to HubSpot so it can actually happen and work. So, so Joe, one, yeah. one thing to <clears throat> put in here so that people are thinking about this for a second, usually without this type of technology and tracking on a CRM uh, system, what happens is it's very hard for you when you go out and you put out a brochure or you put up a table or you do something for the donor to understand what the actual outcome was. Um, I think what happens here and what Joe's talking about with these types of tools and technology, is he and some of his campaigns you'll see later on could track where individuals actually went, could go back to the donor and say, do you know, we actually through this process took a person not from just awareness and education, but actual behavior change as evidence through technology.
And this allows then you as a nonprofit, it's not negating that one-on-one, -on -one, but what it is is actually giving you more of a robust way to educate your donors on how to take people through a process using technology and front-facing activities to really create and show and demonstrate the outcomes of the work that you're doing. And that's critical when it comes to fundraising. And it's also critical when it comes to getting your partners to buy in around being part of a larger model, because giving them this ability to see the change is something that many of your partners may or may not have. So it makes you a leader in the market. Exactly. Yeah, it's super important. I mean, everything that you're doing is is documented and measured. So you can always be optimizing along the way. Again, the, the Peggy's point is fundraisers want to know. I mean, this gets back to impact investing, which we'll, we'll go over as well. So we can show you know, where their dollars are going and, and what's making the biggest impact uh, in the community, whether it's fundraisers or you know, you're trying to solve the opioid crisis in, in, in your hometown. So, and there was a question by Brent on there about donor cultivation. There are a lot of systems that are specifically just for donor engagement. That's great if all you do is work with donors. But if you're looking to think about, and I'm not saying that you take and get rid of your donor management, donor management systems are very important, but engagement in a way that they're part of the communication and the planning. We find that donors who want to be part of the planning process are more likely to give you more dollars when they're part of seeing what the challenges are, part of coming up with solutions and actually part of actually giving you more money to solve those solutions that they may not have understood any other way. So those are two ways to think about that. Yeah. I mean, if we go back to the, the previous slide, you know, if, if, you're, if you're specifically thinking about donors, you know, you can use the donor management system you have, but making sure that you have a, you know, a, a process in place that really targets the donor journey. In some cases, you know, we'll, we'll work with an organization that has Donor Perfect, a little green light. We'll sync HubSpot to it as well, just to, to clean up some workflows. But HubSpot can also be used or another CRM you know, to drive community engagement, where you're not really asking for donations. In this case, you're trying to drive impact in, in the community. Um, you know, he, here's an example. We've used the health belief model multiple times for, um, you know, for campaigns on a, on a state and, and even a national level, um, you know, addressing the social determinants of health. In this case, this is what we did for sexually transmitted infections, um, a whole campaign that was developed um, to do just that. So if you look at the health belief model, that's, you know, in, you know impacting individual perceptions, taking into consideration modifying factors, which you can do on the back end of of a CRM so you understand more about your audience. Um, and then the likelihood of action. The goal is to increase that likelihood of action for anyone, you know, in, when you are addressing a social determinants of health or, or using the health belief model. So all of this can be done, you know, using a, a really robust CRM like, like a HubSpot. You know, on the front end, you're driving awareness. If you look at the bottom, that's through earned and paid media, advertising. And then once you, you know, capture that information from someone, you can get them to, um, to take action. Now you have the automation and, and, and personalization built in. So again, you know, when, when you're communicating with your community, what, what theory of change persuasion model, what, you know, what model are you using? And then once you've really identified that model, then look at the different tools. You know, we're not saying HubSpot is for all of these, but we're just using it as an example. Um, there are some great donor management platforms out there that, that are standalone for, for driving donations. Um, but in, in, the, in the instance of you know, behavior change and, and engaging with the community, you know, Hub, HubSpot seems to be one of the, the better models out there. So one of the things to think about is, and I think that Joe's alluding to is, why, who are, who are the stakeholders you're trying to get to for what purpose? What do you want them to do? And is the type of digital technology you have helping you do that? Um, if you're doing the same old, same old, you're going to keep getting the same outcomes. And we, you know, society's changed. How people get information has changed. And your organization has a capacity a lot of times when we're nonprofits. I imagine many of you think you don't have enough people, enough time, enough money, enough whatever. Digital 
structures like these um, help you take whatever theory of change you have and put it in a relevant pace that gives you capacity and makes your need um, meet your need out in the community. And you know, I think these are ways for us to think um, smarter and not work harder. Um, and so, yeah. Great, thanks, Peggy. Um, just I'm looking at some of the questions. Someone asked what an email drip campaign is. I'll, I'll kind of visualize that a bit here on the right. Um, an email drip campaign is when you might have four different emails pre-written for someone. So if they, if you're trying to get them to come to your annual gala, you send them the first email and it's all about the speakers. And at the end, it says, please register and join our gala. If they don't register and join, then that, then that automatically sends them to the second email. So you might put in there, okay, if they said, if they didn't respond three days later, let's send this next email out. This email is more about the, um, the content of, of the event, and then that'll go out. And if they if they finally register there, then another series of emails get automatically sent, you know, thanking them, asking them to bid on the auction prior. So depending on the way they interact with the messaging, whether it's on the website or an email, you send out a drip campaign basically to, to get them ultimately to, to register for that event or to do whatever call to action you have. It's not gonna usually take one email, it's gonna take a series. And based on the way they respond to each email, you have a pre-canned email to, to nurture them uh, along the way. So that's just a uh, quick and dirty on, on that. <laughs> um, so that was, um, that was the second pillar, you know, communicating with the community, different tools, different theories, different models. But really at the heart of it is you're going to need some form of automation and personalization, which a, a CRM provides you, and, and then putting those tools together so you can do it all in, 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 in one workflow. And, and we can go through you know, one on one on, on how that could happen. But at the very least, begin to think through these, these communication theories, look at the tools you currently are using, you know, whether you're communicating directly through Facebook and Instagram or email, which ones can you start to you know, pull together? And ultimately with, with the right CRM, it, it all gets integrated and it becomes automated. Um, and that's gonna save a ton of time and really increase any conversion rates you're, you're looking for when you're, when you're um, communicating with the community. This last piece, this is the third pillar, um, and that's funders. You know, and looking at data and dashboards, really around impact investing. You know, funders are gonna to wanna to know now, is, is there money going to the right, are you, are you, are you investing it properly and what's, what's their re return on investment? And there's, there's different tools to, to do that. You know, there's you know, super cost effective tools that, that we're gonna share and some more tools like the United Way might use for results-based accounting. And Peggy will, uh, will give some detail on that as well. But just to make it, um, you know, keep keep the flow here. If you are using ClickUp, ClickUp, you know, it's, it's it's a great way to project manage. So when you're project managing, you're also tracking time, you're tracking expenses. A lot of organizations will will use ClickUp on the back end too, so they can they can see how um, profitable per se um, a a campaign is or you know, if a funder gave them money to execute a certain initiative, at least you can you can track costs and 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 see where all your costs are, and then you know out take a look at at the um, the funding that you got associated with that, and and look at the RI. But ClickUp can be used to track time, expenses, and funding. It's it's a nice way to use that. Um, HubSpot. Is, is great for funder reporting uh, even more so. So like ClickUp, you can track time, expenses and funding, but then you can also track your communications investment. So if you were given $10,000, $100,000 to you know, promote awareness around the Heart Association of, of Oregon per se, um, and, and you're gonna spend that money, you're gonna wanna know, and you're gonna wanna share with your, with your funders what was the reach of that investment? What was the ROI? How many people, you know, admitted them are, are checking their blood pressure now or showed up for a, uh, a CPR class? So you can actually look at 
um, the communication investment impact of what you're doing. And, and that's super powerful. So that takes ClickUp uh, one step better because you're really digging into the details of how you're spending your, your money in terms of communications and what communication channels are working the best. If you're noticing that you know, social media is just crushing it in terms of engagement and it's an awareness campaign, you might go back to your funder and say, listen, we put $10,000 towards social media. The, the impact was two or three X. We're not seeing as much in, um, you know, in advertising per se. So anyway, HubSpot, great for that. And then finally, getting um, even more deeper is, you know, right. it's clear impact. I'll, I'll have Peggy go over this, so, but this is um, one step further than what we've been yeah. talking about. So when you think about your internal machinations and how you're thinking as an organization, but for those who put together collaboratives, who work across partner landscapes and have to come to consensus about what you're trying to turn the curve on in the landscape of social determinants, whether it's poverty, housing, transportation, education, you name it, you can create a scorecard within your community for relatively little cost and ease using a clear impact, um, uh, uh, the clear impact platform. Um, and you know, we can put you into contact or you can come through PMG to talk about that. But what that does is it allows you as a community to gain consensus around what indicators you're choosing, how to manage and monitor them, how to use technology um, to link um, with some maybe census data, state data, or local data that helps you keep a dashboard in the forefront of whatever community initiative you have going on. And what happens is if you blend your front-facing dashboard and your front-facing aligned benchmarks from a community perspective with your back office funders on the CRM, and you combine those two to show funders what does it really take to move the needle on one of these issues? What does it really take for us as community partners to be able to embrace and change this social determinant? How does that look from a granular level in a geographic region or even a state region, right? Um, whatever that might be, you're able to present to the community what they're coming around, what they're getting around, where they're putting their resources. And then you're able to make a really good argument why you need more resources to get it done, why you need better partners. So thinking about aligning these two things together um, uh, uh, in some way, your internal model with a front facing model that shows whatever collaboratives you may have going on and what benchmarks you're trying to drive change for, this is a really useful tool. Um, and I think when we're, we're, I think Joe's gonna talk a little bit about a new offering from TechSoup a little bit, a little bit coming out to sort of tease out for you. There's ways to bring groups together, put a community dashboard together, and then behind the scenes also create dynamic funding strategies to get those community uh, impact needs met. Okay, it, it, exactly. This is, this is a nice um, tool. United Way uses Clear Impact's platform um, to, to measure the results-based accountability of the nonprofits that they invest in. So they'll invest in you know, a lot of different nonprofits on a statewide level. Those nonprofits need to report back on you know, the impact that they're having in the community. And they have to use this same platform um, to report back on. And then the United Way looks at, you know, they have they might, you know, for one state, they might have a hundred different nonprofits that they've invested in, but they're all using this one platform. And then you can really look at the data across different nonprofits that are trying to, you know, serve a particular issue like food insecurity or you know, the opioid efforts. Um, so it's 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 a nice tool. It's used by United Way and a lot of the folks that that they uh, that they invest in too. The next slide. We're almost there. Summary. Um, yeah. So there's just kind of want to reiterate here. I know it, it's it's a lot. We could do a you know, a webinar on, on each one of these, but I think it's it's nice to really look at this whole piece in, in one snapshot here. But yeah, so from a stakeholder standpoint, you know, it, it, the collective impact is is the model of choice for a lot of larger organizations. 
or even smaller organizations who are trying to make a, a community impact. Um, and then technology that you really need to look at there when you're, when you're you know, communicating with your stakeholders is a collaboration and project management tools. We discussed ClickUp, uh, Airtable, HubSpot, and I, I should, I need to add Slack in there as well. Slack is great uh, internally too. And then from a community standpoint, um, that's, that's when you're, you're trying to train, you're trying to drive behavior change and you wanna look, take a, an omni-channel approach. How do you communicate across multiple channels? And the technology that you really need to look at is, is personalization and automation. How do you bring that to the table when you're trying to drive change in your community? Um, you know, today we went over HubSpot, which has a CRM and CMS uh, to do that. And there's other tools as well. And then from funders, communicating with funders, that's, you know, the system or model is, you know, everyone's going towards is impact investing. And you know, in that case, you're going to have to show a dashboard on your on their return of investment. They're going to want scorecards, uh, results-based accountability on on the impact in the community, and on their investment. Um, you can do that with ClickUp in terms of time and money spent. HubSpot is nice because then you can add uh, accountability in terms of your uh, communication efforts, and then clear impact. Now that that goes one step further, and that's really looking at you know, the whole ecological impact um, in, in your community. So I hope that was helpful, but there's, there's a quick snapshot. And again, you can, you can dig deep into all these, but just to get, to get everyone thinking in, in this manner, this holistic systems approach to combining theories of change, models of um, right. you know, community management with, with technology that can get, help you get there a bit quicker. So Joe, there's a couple of things. There's been some questions, right? So some of the questions are kind of complex and really hard to, unless we know a little bit more about your organization. So we're going to give you our, our numbers and our info. And we'll be glad to talk to you about what those needs might meet, might be. Um, somebody brought up um, the issue with Salesforce. You know, Salesforce was never meant to really be a platform for nonprofits. And many of them have struggled to get it to meet the needs that they have because of what the work they're doing across partners and others. It's a little more complex to unpack, but I'm sure there's ways we could look at what you have and see what could be done from a technology standpoint. I mean, that Joe's team is um, absolutely on point for that. Um, Autism Hearts Foundation had a question a little bit about how to monetize. Um, absolutely, I think there are some really great ways and some tools that were discussed today, and maybe some we didn't, that could really support you in getting where you wanna be with that. Um, I think um, that's a specific question that could um, we could take a deeper dive on. And I'm sure, please reach out to Joe because that's what they're here for. Um, yeah, that's it, in e-commerce. So. I mean, that's just, there's a whole yeah. commerce component of, of, of HubSpot and these other CRM tools that, you know, you could really build in there. It's, it's, it's a storefront basically, and you know, you're selling products, but the same theories apply. Exactly. I, here's the thing. Don't be embarrassed. Um, you're, I'm not a techie. This is why I work with Joe's team. Um, but I know there are better ways to do community engaged, engaged uh, processes, uh, research, support, funding, and partner engagement. And so you seek out people who really understand that to help you be more successful in what you do really well as a nonprofit. Um, if you're really good at what you do, then let others who are really good at what they're do accelerate your work, which is what we're here about today. Yeah, I, I, and you know, I think what, what Peggy brings up, there's just two slides here. The last one is, is a really cool offering from, um, from uh, TechSoup, it's called Quad. If you go uh, just search Quad TechSoup, you'll find it, the link's up there. But TechSoup's built a community that's specifically based on different um, verticals. They, they, it launched with uh, food securities and it provides member to member communications, peer to peer communications, even further discounts on a lot of programs. So we've gone over funder communications, community communications, stakeholder communications. This is something really cool, innovative. It's, it's peer to peer communications with nonprofits who are, who are serving the same communities you are uh, around the globe. So check that out. I think it's, it's a really uh, innovative program and, and, and way to, um, to drive change. 
And if you line that up with your communication strategy, with the um, scorecard or a dashboard for your community around whatever social issue you're trying to change together, um, those are two really great ways to really show your funders um, your outputs relationship and your outcomes the change that relationship occur is occurring. Um, so just a thought about how to use those tools in a way that would really give a picture on what's happening in your community space for social impact. Yeah, exactly. You have to combine them. Um, I'm looking at just the last few questions here. Uh, it should be quad, not squad, but we'll, we'll put, the, put the link to quad back in here. And finally, uh, can you tell us more about TAP Network? Yeah, we're a, we're a marketing technology firm that specializes uh, in what for nonprofits. We're an exclusive partner with TechSoup in that, in that vein. We do everything from building websites to mobile applications, software development for nonprofits on one side of the fence. On the other side, it's putting um, these campaigns together, whether it's fundraising campaigns, community communications, you know, everything to do with digital marketing. We work with PMG because they're they're just phenomenal organization in terms of strategy and um, looking at collective impact approach, systems approach to driving collaboratives across all your different stakeholders. So together, uh, we make a great team. And with TechSoup, it's just even better. We you know you get access to all these great discounted programs and content. So we all we all work together. So that was a mouthful. That's my TED talk. Um, but, but thanks everybody. I, I, I know it was a lot, but we're here to help. If you want to uh, reach out to Peggy or ourselves for a consultation, um, if you want more discount links, we'll, we'll share those as well. So I hope, I hope that was helpful and, um, yeah, have a great rest of your day and just reach out if, if you need any more information.